Buenos días a todos, bienvenidos a este seminario del Centro de Investigación Operativa organizado por el Grupo de Periodo de Juegos. Eh, es un placer para mí presentar a Inés Abecoli. La presentación la voy a hacer en español porque ella es en español y está practicando, pero bueno, su charla, por supuesto, va a ser en inglés. Entonces, Agnesa es eh, estudiante de doctorado en la Agriculture University of Tirana. Ella está en su último año del programa de doctorado. Eh, Agnesa ah, bueno, obtuvo el grado y el máster en matemáticas en, en Albania. Luego también durante siete años pues, ha estado impartiendo clases en diferentes universidades en Albania, tanto a tiempo parcial como a tiempo completo. Ha enseñado o impartido clases en cálculo, en álgebra y en geometría. Durante su tesis doctoral, durante sus años de, de estudiante de doctorado, que como ya he dicho está en el último, ha realizado dos intercambios de estudiantes, uno en la Universidad de Hohenheim en Alemania y otro en la Universidad de Zaragoza que ha sido este año, y ahora pues está aquí en Elche, en nuestra universidad, pues visitando nuestro centro de investigación y trabajando con nuestro grupo de investigación en teoría de juegos. Su campo de estudio son o es modelos de teoría de juegos cooperativos aplicados a la agricultura o al sector agrícola, y hoy nos va a presentar pues el primero de estos modelos que ha estudiado y que es cómo distribuir los beneficios en cadenas de distribución agrícolas y haciendo una aproximación de este material. Pues es muy bien. Gracias. Bueno, well, uh, dear all, thanks for being here in my presentation. My name is Daniel Dabekoli, and I'm, I'm a PhD student in the Agriculture University of Tirana. Here, I'm going to present one of the most important researchers that I'm working on in my thesis. Uh, this is done in a great collaboration with Professor Anna from Miller Hernandez University and Professor Luis from Alicante University. Here, in this researcher, we have applied cooperative game theory model in an agriculture supply chain uh, situation. But before starting the application, firstly, we need some preliminaries of cooperative game theory, so which are the main basic elements that this model offers. The next, we have introduced a multi-distributor farmer supply chain situation in which we have analyzed the, uh, the possibility of cooperation in the supply chain. And then uh, we have defined the multi-distributor farmer corresponding medium gain. And at the end, which is also the most important part of our researcher, we have generated a new uh, theoretical uh, allocation results for distribution, for distribute uh, the, the results that comes from cooperation, but uh, in order to compensate the weakest part of the supply chain that you are going to see that in our case is the farmer. And at the end, we wanted to, uh, to extend this researcher in doing one uh, application in a real life uh, situation, but with data, of course, close to reality. Okay, uh, firstly, a cooperative game with transvolatility consists of a couple and B, where A is a set of player and B is the characteristic function. We know that when you have a set with N elements, it has a total two equivalent N subsets. The subset of the set of player here in this model are called collision. This is why sometimes it is called collision of game. And the characteristic function is a function which maps to each collision, so to each subset of the set of layer, a real value from the real set of number. And this real value can be seen as the utility that the member of a collision can be generated when they are working together. But we are interested in that type of game that has some good properties, because in this way, at the end, we are going to have more general results. And precisely, we are interested in a superlative and strictly integrated monotone game, because in this way, at the end, the best option for the players is to form the ground collision where they are included all the set of players. Well, I said that the utility that the member of the collision can be generated when they are working together is measure as a real value. But a real value can be divided in a endless way. So the big question that comes here is how we are going to distribute the, the uh, funds from cooperation between members in such a way that all of them remain satisfied. And in the, uh, this model the, uh, makes the distribution with the so-called allocation, which you usually they are represented by a vector x, where the number of the coordinates of this vector vector maps with the number of the players. And we are interested in stable allocation vector. And there is exactly the core of the game, which contains all the stable allocation vectors. So at the end, we wanted to define a cooperative game that has a non-empty core. 
Okay, now, before starting the application, firstly, let me show you which is the story of the, of the supply chain. We have, uh, firstly, I want to emphasize one fact that we have analyzed single product, single period agriculture supply chain, where the components of the supply chain are one farmer, one agriculture cooperative, which acts on behalf of the farmer without any cost and without any profit, uh, profit and we have an distributor. Each of these distributors are non competing which means that each of them has its own uh, market. Okay, what do we know about them? Firstly, we define by n the set of distributor and by zero the farmer, where the total set of agents we define by n zero. We, we know for the farmer the Q, which is the total harvested by the farmer, together with the total cost for producing this product. Next, what we have? We have the purchasing cost function that each of these distributors buy from the farmer or the selling price function from a farmer to the distributor. And we have for each distributor, I, we have the transportation cost function, which measure, which measure the, the, the transports from agricultural property to the point of sale, of, of sale. And we have the recommended selling price, PI, for each distributor that sell this product to their own market. Okay. For each of these um, uh, functions, we have that they are decreasing, which means that the larger the quantity, the lower it is going to be to be the, 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 the cost. But we want that this supply chain to be profitable for the member of this supply chain. And this is why we need uh, and we put two uh, last inequality. What are we saying this to uh, the first inequality? We are saying to the farmer that even though you are going to sell your product, uh, with a purchasing cost function, which is decreasing function, we are saying that at the moment that the total, uh, the moment that you are going to sell a larger quantity Q, it is going to uh, it, it is it is going to uh, to cover all all the total cost of the production. And from the other part, we are saying to the distributor that even though you are going to sell a little or small quantity to the to the market, again the total uh, again the recommended selling price that we are offering. We are offering to you is going to cover the total cost, which is the transportation cost together with the purchasing cost. Okay, now because of the fact that we want to uh, uh, apply cooperative gain theory model, we have to identify where there exists incentives of cooperation in this model. And we have two moments of cooperation. Let's start the first uh, part. There, there exists a cooperation between a set of distributors as but excluding the farmer. Why there is it? Because in this, uh, in this way, the distributor can order the QS quantity to the farmer, and in this way, they can enjoy a lower per case, uh, sorry, okay, they can enjoy a lower per case, uh, a lower uh, per case function. Why? Because of the fact how we define the per case cost function B, that the larger the quantity, the lower it is going to be the, 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 the cost, but from the other part, the agriculture cooperative only informs the farmer about the quantity and doesn't inform the farmer which of the distributor makes this quantity. So this is why there exists an incentives of cooperation between distributors. The next part of cooperation, which is most complicated, there exists an incentives of cooperation between whom? Between a set of distributors together with the farmer. Hmm, what is going to happen in this moment? Now the role of agriculture cooperative makes more sense and it is more important. Let's analyze it with, uh, with detail. In, it, in this moment, the agriculture cooperative makes an agreement between whom? Between the set of dis distributors and between the farm. What is included in this, in this agreement? Firstly, there are included three points. Firstly, the farmer commits to enable to the distributor the desired quantity QS that the distributor wants, but now at cost price, firstly. Secondly, from the other part, the distributors are obligated to compensate the farmer for the sold quantity Q minus QS based on the compensation cost B bar. And lastly, each of the distributors, after they are going to sell their product to their uh, own market, they are obligated to, to, to give to the farmer uh, some uh, profits from their general profits. Okay, it looks nice, we are going to see, but we have to be problems here. Why? Because how we are going to define the compensation cost parameter B bar, and secondly, how we are going to, so uh, which is the part that the distributor are going to, to, to give to the farmer. Okay, we are go I'm going to talk a little bit later for this, uh, for this two question. Firstly, 
Uh, let's define the, the, the total model, uh, which are the variables. We have the QI, the quantity of product ordered by the distributor I, and the QS, the total order size by a collision S. In this way, we have defined a multi distributor farmer uh, situation as a tuple, where uh, M0 is the set of the total agents, Q and C is the total uh, producing uh, quantity together with the total cost, uh, uh, B is the replacing cost function at the first type of cooperation, T and P are respectively the uh, transportation cost function and the recommended selling price for each distributor I, and we have the B bar compensation cost as the second type of cooperation. Now, how we are going to define the decision variables? Of course, that is going to be an optimization problem. In the first case, we are where we have the cooperation between distributor, excluding the farmer. It is going to be a maximization problem where it is for each a player uh, of uh, of coalition S, the the, the revenue that comes that comes from selling Q of I quantity at PI uh, 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 price minus the total cost, which is the transportation cost uh, together with the forecasting cost. With inequality, it's very important to underline the fact that this is an optimization problem with inequality constraint, where the total quantity ordered by the distributor is not going to exceed the total available that the farmer uh, can, can produce. And uh, now me, as a person that has studied mathematics, I have a question, so are you sure that you are going to ensure uh, an optimal solution of this optimization problem? Absolutely, yes, because all these objective functions are continuous from the other path. From the other part, you have, we have that the QS is a complex set, which means that it is uh, bounded and it is, uh, 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 it is closed. So we are sure that there exists a one optimal solution for this optimization problem. For the second case, the idea is, is, is the same, but we have a different forecasting uh, cost function. We do not have any more the B forecasting cost function that is distributed by to the farmer, but we have two moments of uh, of uh, of purchasing cost function. One that the distributor by QS quantity at C divided by Q, and the other one for the compensation for the unsold quantity Q minus QS. Again, here we are at the same uh, idea that there exists an optimal solution of this of this model. Okay. The, about the farmer's revenue, it is simple. In the first case, it is going to be the farmer's revenue that comes from selling QS quantity at B cost uh, fa cost price. Uh, se sorry, uh, sorry, a uh, B price function. And in the second case, the farmer's revenue is divided from the revenue that he's going to get from selling uh, at cost price uh, quantity uh, cost price and the revenue that he's going to get from the stock uh, quantity uh, uh, compensated by B bar uh, compensation. Okay, now let's say, let's stay a moment and let's make a break and in order to say what, in what condition we are. We are studying our uh, media situation that satisfies two fundamental conditions. So now start with all our, our researcher. Uh, I'm going with the last one, with not depleting the harvest, so the QS, doesn't exceed the total quantity ordered by the distributor. What is going to happen if it is exceed or not? Well, we are here in our case, so this is our uh, research done in this case. And secondly, with sustainable compensation. Hmm, what does this mean with sustainable compensation? Okay, in the first type of cooperation, it is, it is easy that the distributor are going to say uh, there exists an incentives of the cooperation between distribute, between distributor. But in the second type of cooperation, the distributor are gathering together and they are saying, wait a moment, why is in our interest in order to be part also the farmer in our cooperation? And of course that uh, they have, uh, they are interested to be part in cooperation together with the farmer. If the total cost that they have to pay to the farmer uh, uh, in the second type of cooperation is going to be less than the total cost that they would have to pay to the farmer, excluding the cooperation. And from this analyze, we have that the B-bar, so the compensation uh, cost parameter must be less than the minimum of this expression. So we are in that moment that we have uh, uh, the key why that there exists an incentive of cooperation between the distributor and between the farmer. And after this, we have defined the multi-distributor farmer, corresponding multi-distributor farmer game, where the set of player is exactly the set of distributor together with the farmer, and the 
characteristic function is exactly the profit that each coalition can be generated, including and including the farmer. Okay, what we have proved about this game? Firstly, we have proved that each of these coalitions generate profit. Furthermore, this profit is larger when this coalition is also part of the farmer. Firstly, secondly, we have proved that this game is super additive, strictly increasing monotone, so the best option for them is to form the grand coalition where there are included all the distributors together with the farmer. And lastly, we have proved that media game is balanced. Well, why we need that and how we did that? Firstly, we are, we are interested in games that have non-empty core. And for, having, for uh, proving that the game has a non-empty core, we needed at least one allocation that is part of this uh, no, uh, that is part of the core. And how we did that? We are inspired by the paper of 2007. We started with an altruistic allocation. What we, what we did in this altruistic allocation? We are giving to each distributor the maximum benefit that they can uh, receive when they are part of the grand coalition. And to the farmer, we are giving nothing. So we are giving zero. And at the end, we have proved that this altruistic allocation is part of the core of the game. So it satisfies two fundamental criteria of the of being of the core of, of the game. Okay, from theoretical part, it's nice, it's interesting because we found an allocation that is part of the core of the game. But from the application part, this is not correctly because the farmer is coming and is, is, is saying to us, wait a moment, I am part of your cooperation, I am part of your coalition, I'm contributing for increasing your benefit, and at the end you are going to give me nothing? No, sorry, but I don't want to be part of this, uh, of this coalition, so I'm better alone. And this uh, started the struggle of us in order to find an alternative. Uh, core allocation, but in order also to compensate the farm. So from this, uh, from the the, the last, from, from the big uh, profit that we are giving to the distributor, we have to give something to the farmer. Okay, how we did that? Let's suppose for a moment that uh, this new altruistic, uh, new, this new allocation uh, vector that we are looking uh, we are looking on uh, is defined by a fee. We wanted that this fee satisfy some criteria in order not to have the same problem with altruistic allocation. Which are these criteria? Firstly, efficiency. Efficiency is a general result. We want that at the end the total quantity, uh, uh, the total quantity produced or that comes from cooperation is going to be distributed all among the members, so not having loss of profits. And secondly, distributor reduction and maximal compensation. Well, what does this mean? Okay, we are saying for a moment and we are going to get to the distributor and we are saying, wait, we give to you in the beginning the altruistic allocation, which is the maximum profit that you are that you can generate. But I'm going to reduce from each of you something. Well, what is going to be something and why I have to do that? Because I'm saying to the, to the distributor that you could generate this maximum profit with the help or with the contribution of the farmer. So it's logic that I have to reduce something from each of you. And what is this going to be this something? This something is exactly the farmer's marginal contribution to coalition of distributor that include player I. And in this way, this, redu re this reduction it is going to be different for each for a different distributor. And but at the end, we don't want to overcompensate the farmer because in this way we are going to have a problem with the distributor because we are reducing something for the But it, it must have a, a, a it, it, it must have a limit for for this uh, for this compensation. This is why we are going to take the the sum of the minimum of all of this of this uh, of this uh, uh, marginal contribution to the farmer. And being in this uh, in this analysis, we have proved that there exists a unique solution that we. Uh, the, the, uh, that we denote by sigma on this class of media game that satisfy the three of both property efficiency, distributor re reduction, and maximal compensation. And we have called this uh, sigma allocation as farmer compensation allocation because each distributor compensates the farmer for the increase in profit that comes from cooperation in coalition with the distributor. Okay, we can say that we are not at the same point that we were beginning when the farmer gets nothing, but we are in, that, in one point that we are going to say a little, uh, a little the farmer. But what's happened? Well, from the original point, it's good because we proved that this sigma v is part of the core of the game, which means that it is 
it is a stable allocation. But is this the best benefit or the best result that we can give to the farmer? Because the core of the game contains an infinite allocation. So is this the best? Well, it looks like no. Because we found a counterexample with uh, one farmer and with three distributors. Here you can see all the data for the farmer, uh, QC, together with, the, uh, for his, together with the selling price B, and we calculated the B bar 0.2, and here we have uh, PIQ and TIQ for each distributor I, and we have calculated the results, the results of that are, are uh, calculated by Amaza, where uh, we have um, here, RS is the benefit of the of the of the farmer, and RS minus C is the is the net benefit that the farmer uh, could receive. And if we are going to see here, we have calculated here it is the altruistic uh, solution, and here it is the uh, sigma V, which is the PC allocation. Well, we, if we are going back again to the table that we generated the data, we are going to be here in this moment. And what happened? Here we have two collisions, the collision that where the, the, the distributor cooperate together, and here we have the, the collision where uh, the distributor together with the farmer cooperate together. And we, if we are going to see here, the farmer is, uh, is going to say us, wait a moment, because even though I'm going, when I'm going to be part of the ground collision, and even though you are going to give me something from your sigma calculation, at the end, I'm going to have, again, a negative payoff. While, if I'm going to be out of this collision, so if the three distributor is going to, uh, to cooperate together, and I'm going to be out of, of the distributor, out of the cooperation, without your profit, I'm going to receive a positive payoff. So why I'm going to be part of the ground collision? And Starting from this fact, we have to analyze and to rethink again where, in which moment, we are going to have an incentive of farmer to be part of the ground position. And of course, that we are going to have an incentive of farmer to be part of the group of the position if the benefit at the end that we are giving to the farmer is going to be the maximum benefit that he could receive in any other type of collision. And for this, we have proved the following proposition that this is true, so this can be done if and only if the B bar, so if and only if the compensation cost B bar for the unsold quantity is part of this interval. So in this moment, the farmer is satisfied and is going to say, well, now it's, it's my interest also to be part of the ground collision. But we have a problem. Why? Because we define the P bar in the beginning in order to have sustainable compensation for the distributor. And you are saying to me that the farmer is interested to be part of the ground collision, even if the B bar is part of this uh, of this interval, what is it going to happen if the B bar is not part of this interval? Because you 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 calculated in the beginning, you didn't took into account this uh, interval in the beginning. So it looks like we have to reconsider again, to re redefine again a new allocation bar in this case, which is true only for uh, when the B bar compensation is it's not part of the of the of the interval. And we define the theta B allocation, which we called it the minimal proportional compensation allocation. And for this theta B allocation, we prove that uh, in this moment, even though when the B bar is not part of the of the interval, it is true that the, the, the farmer is going to get the maximum payoff that he could get. But we have a problem again here. Well, the struggle was very, very hard with that because the theta B is not part of the core of the game. So we are in that moment that to see uh, where it is going, this theta B is a stable allocation. And we proved the last theorem that this theta B, when the B bar is not part of the, of, the, of the interval, it's part of the core of the game, if and only if the maximum benefit that the, that the farmer could receive is less than this, this expression. And with this last theorem, we have proved and we have analyzed all the possibility that could happen in our theoretical model. Okay, now we wanted, I said in the beginning, that we wanted our model to be applicable in reality. And for this, we wanted to show, okay, let's take a case. We took a case with one farmer, and it is a farmer which produced a specific type of apple product. 
and the role of the distributor is uh, the refrigerated store. We took into account one farmer and five refrigerated store. Here are all the data that I won't go to size the data that the data are close to reality because we calculated the function and the function can change by time and all of this, but we are concentrated in only one period, one single period. So let's say that from theoretical part it's a little bit uh, abstract. And what we have seen. Here we calculated all the results. Well, not easy because we have to take into account 63 collisions, and here are all the, 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 the results that come from the calculation. The, the, yellow, the first yellow line is exactly the, the line where the farmer is going to get the maximum payoff, and the last yellow line is exactly what we want to do. We want to be part of the ground collision and zero. Uh, from from the from the, the results we have the main data and we have we are sure that we are in our model theoretical movement because the QS quantity doesn't exceed the Q the Q quantity that the farmer can produce from the calculation we define the B by uh, compensation cost and for our lucky let's call like this we are also in our case that the B bar is not part of the interval, so it's best to, to, to work and to, to calculate the theta, the, the, theta, uh, the theta result. And also from the other part, the revenue that the farm is going to get at the end uh, of being part of, of ground collision is less than the maximum, so we are perfectly in our condition of our theoretical uh, results. And here there are the calculations starting with authoritative allocation, with a, a farmer compensation allocation as, and with a minimal proportional allocation. If we are going to see, and uh, as in our theoretical model, if we are going to, to see at the end, the farmer is going to get a larger, uh, a, a large benefit that he could get in our, uh, that he could get in any other type of coalition. So, which means that we are compensating from one part the farmer and from the other part we are we have an incentives of cooperation with distributors and everyone is happy and at the end are we going to have uh, further uh, uh, further research for this uh, for this uh, uh, for this uh, research of course firstly why not to start to start this uh, this uh, research but with multiple farmer and multiple distributors secondly to see the implication of this model where the qs quantity reached exactly the total quantity q produced by the farmer and why not to explore alternative game uh, models such as tackle band leader follower game and of course that thank you very much yeah i just have a question I'm yes. for the for the talk um I just have a question related to the application. Um, have you already applied this for some uh, cooperative there in Albania or something? Um, for the application bar, firstly, this is well. I wanted to uh, to to say something. The application bar is going to be included in my uh, thesis uh, researcher, and this is only the first step. The first step was to gather in data in order to define the function because we have to define the general purpose function, the price, the recommended selling price. Firstly, we gather well. Which is the interval of the data that they sell the, their products, starting from the lowest price to the maximum price, and then we have generated the the, the function with the uh, the function. But uh, then, what we are doing, we are uh, offering to the farmer and also to the distributor a calculation of the result. We are saying to them, well, from the original part and with your data that you gave to us. Here it is an application of our model, and you can see that it, it can be applicable. So it's not uh, difficult also to calculate and all of this part. But from the other part, they want to do that, or so if they want to do that, this in reality, so if they want to cooperate, if they want to do that, then it depends their in, in their choice. But we want we we serve to them that this model is not abstract model, but it can be applied. This was the idea of this. Uh, of this application part and also because uh, we know that uh, in the cooperative game where the number of players is going to increase also the number of calculations is going to increase and we want to say to, 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 to the farmer and to the distributor that look it's not very uh, easy to calculate the levels of the cooperative game but it's easy to calculate our solution that from the political part and it's good so in other words we are, we are giving to them an alternative of, uh, of, uh, of solution in order not to be so difficult for the calculation. Any other questions for Mark? Okay.
emocional, Vanessa. Thank you for, thank you for your nice talk. Thank you for the opportunity. We wish you the best, but thank you have time to do more things. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.